People deluded, I'm back again. Now, Arsenal are not playing, but if you're like me, you can't switch off from Arsenal. Now, courtesy of reading The Athletic and also via the Twitter account Obino, who I believe um, his real name's Rob, and I think he works for Opta. Either way, so I, I think he's got one of the best Twitter accounts. He, you know, he, he gives a lot of data that you can, you know, that in, in today's day and age, stats and data, the sheer mass of them, you know, in isolation, they mean nothing, you know. It's all about the quality of the stats, and I think he does very well for, for contextualising it for Arsenal. And it, 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 sometimes it, it throws up some shock. Sometimes it kind of backs up what I think I'm seeing with my eyes. And I'm sure the same could be said for you. So courtesy of these two outlets, I've obviously been reading articles. And I think they've been throwing up some interesting sort of points, people. I believe the, the first one is from The Athletic. And again, it's not going to make sense because I've literally... The sentences might not make sense, but just focus on the words because I've literally just been copy and pasted. But you might know already, Arsenal are taking just nine shots per game on average, which ranks us at 15th in the Premier League. As we know, we're very toothless in terms of the amount of goals. And it's the age old saying, you don't shoot, you don't score. If you don't shoot, you don't score, you can't create. You're in a bit of a madness and, you know, we do score quite high, I believe, without looking at statistics for possession and things. But possession is nine tenths of the law. Possession is one of the best forms of attack for me or one of the best forms of defence. If you have the ball, the opposition don't, but it's what you do with it. Possessions for the sake of possession is boring, it's stale and it's going to harm you. As an Arsenal fan, we've seen that bare possession, you know, bare other stats, you know, bare passes. But the stats that mean anything the three points and who has scored and who's who scored more than the other point and other team taking three points more often than not it is an Arsenal on the victorious side um, apparently though somewhat surprisingly this low shot tally equates to 1.1 expected goals per game which is a slightly more respectable ninth in the Premier League for this season these two statistics show that Arsenal rarely create chances but when they do they're usually very high quality Arsenal's expected per shot of 0 0.12 is the third highest in the league. Again, that's the sort of stuff that was said under Emre. We're shooting less, but we're scoring more. It's very, it shows we're more clinical. When you get away with it and you win, and you might win a 4-0 or something like against Fulham, it's great. But, you know, that tells me we're toothless. You don't shoot, you don't score. You know, you need to spam our positions. And we have a lot of... I don't have the statistics, and I don't know if it's here, actually. But we have a lot of shots in the opposition's box without actually doing anything, people, as well. I mean, touches in the opposition box. Um, apparently, only 35% of, of our possession reaches the final third, which is the 14th highest mark in the Premier League. Compare that to Manchester City, who have 50... You know, Liverpool's at 48 and Manchester United at 43. And the difference in quality of ball position progression starts to become evident. Now, again, United, one thing you can say, they are good in, in terms of going forward. Um, and definitely the two other clubs mentioned before them. Um, obviously, Arsenal struggle to bring the ball into dangerous areas. But we also don't create enough possessions in the game to give ourselves more opportunity to get there. Um, looking at it, Arsenal have had 29 possessions per game, that the Athletic said. Um, that end in the final third, which means that unless someone fancies pinging one from 40 yards, Arsenal have had just 29 opportunities from which to create goal-scoring opportunities. That is the lowest mark in the league behind Newcastle United. Now, this is where it goes back to me saying, people, undoubtedly we need a creative mid, but a creative mid or a n number eight that can do that, which I would like to see, doesn't solve all the problems because I am not seeing anything from a coaching perspective to suggest that we're going to create a bag of chances. Every man in possession needs to have at least two options. Our players don't move enough. We're very static. Our players are not brave enough to play certain passes you know we haven't got enough muscle memory in terms of the attacking third something that for all Arsenal's banter years at the Emirates was here in abundance that's what's on Emre man said Emre that was previously on Emre that is on Arteta to fix as well as bringing in a new man same way I said defensively we were seeing an improvement to say alright cool you get Gabriel you're patterning we don't know you know you could get the most creative midfielder in the planet and they are going to show their quality but they're not going to play to their best potential because of what you're seeing with your eyes and right now the stats are backing it up too um you know these are not where you should be um under Wenger Arsenal were averaging more than 44 possessions a game that ended in the final third Arsenal have played only 381 passes into that area on the pitch this season admittedly that is a fixture that may be screwed by the taxing fixture list they have faced but ranks them at just 14th in the league. Now, obviously, when you play City and Liverpool, that's going to have some sort of bearing on the result. But again, it kind of could highlight stuff. Um, again, we need to create more from open play. Apparently, Arsenal's inability to get into dangerous areas is impacting their attacking players. Willian managed between 38 and 44 touches in the attacking third per game at Chelsea 
at Arsenal that's dropped by more than a third to 24. Now, Williams got all his critiques, but again, it goes back to the system and what the players are being told because it's poor as I think Williams been and is he has he like everyone has suffered because there seems to be no ideas in an attacking third and Williams kind of vaguely spoken about that in, in relation to what Arteta has wanted from him in an interview before um, so again it goes back to that he said what's more it He's a player that has a tendency to drive in transition. Arsenal's tendency to move the ball upfield slowly, averaging 0 0.9595 metres of possession per second, means he's more likely to encounter a deep block. Obviously, they've mentioned, the Athletic mentioned Ozil. It said, it's also necessary to touch on the absence of Meze Ozil. Although it is tempting to consider his playmaking ability... Um, to be a panacea for this side. I can't say that word, you know, I didn't go eating. I don't know what that means. But he said his impact on the team had diminished in recent years. In 2015-16, he was having 45 touches per game in the final third. 2018 and 19, it's failed to 28. Um, assists per game dropped from 0 0.56 in 2015-06. Um, apologies if I messed up at the beginning. To 0 0.10 in 2018-19. Now, obviously, you know, some of it might be a bit of a decline. He's Some of it has to be reflected in since Wenger's left. He's had a marginalised role. So, obviously, your statistics are going to be lacking. But, again, the very fact of season in, season out, we're still talking about Mesut Ozil and creativity or contingency plans haven't been put in place to address this. Highlights an issue as well in itself. We also have an issue in terms of dribblers as well and people that want to do it. We all know Pepe's been marginalised, but apparently Nicolas Pepe, Bakayo Saka and Hector Bellerin are frequently the only strong dribblers in the start in 11. Only Sheffield United and Burnley have attempted fewer dribbles than Arsenal this season. So again, on top of not passing forward, when you have a dribbler or someone that wants to drive at oppositions, you create disruption, you know. You, the team can't really hold their shape. A, a left-back, a centre-half might have to cover his left-back because he's getting destroyed. A winger might have to tuck in, you know, and the gaps start to open. But none of these things seem to happen when Arsenal play people. Looking at Aubameyang, he looks a marginalised figure. Currently, he's attempting just 1.1 shots per 90 minutes, ranking him 47th in the Premier League. His current expected goals per 90 is just 0 0.06, um, which puts him at 65th. Um, only by progressing into the final third more frequently and finding him in more dangerous areas can Arsenal obviously begin to unlock his goal-scoring ability. If we look at, you know, um, Obino, what Obino has brought up, he has said... And here's a bit more interesting, to be fair. He said, um, 14 teams managed more shots than Arsenal. Only Liverpool had a better conversion rate. So let's try and take more opportunities, more or less. Um, apparently, Arsenal are still rated 15th in terms of quality in shots. Um, apparently, Arsenal are rated 13th in terms of converting shots into goals. You know, our actual goals is 9. Our expected goals is 9.3. So, again, we're probably playing to potential. And we seem to be improving in terms of discipline, though, because, as you lot know, we conceded a lot of penalties last season. I ain't got it to hand, but it's just come in my head. We haven't really conceded penalties touch wood and obviously yellow cards we seem to be doing better in as well which was the inspiration behind what i've just said because he has put arsenal have picked up more yellow cards 86 than any other team and also had more the most players sent off um with five last season that hasn't been the case um now you know we're the 40 we're 14th highest for number of cards in the premier league this season we've had two um you know, Partey had two cards in his first 45 minutes of play. You know, he is going to pick up cards, but it is what it is. Um, obviously, we've you, we've got to remember Arsenal have dropped more points from winning positions than all but two teams with 21. 15 of those have come under Mikel Arteta. With that, sadly, the Spaniard has the worst tally in the top flight since he took charge, people, really. Um, obviously... Don't you could depending on how you look at how we're conceding. Apparently, he um, Obino has said, "Don't be fooled by the fact Arsenal conceded fewer goals than each than than in each of the the two previous seasons. Expected goals against was 56. Our goalkeeper saved us a bit, while we also got lucky at times, especially under Arteta because it was at three point. Well, we just says it was under Arteta. Expected goals against for Arsenal is around 9.4 in the Premier League. The team has conceded 10, so it is not to say as, so. It is not as to say if we can say that we've been hard done by. We've been outperformed on expected goals in four matches and were almost dead level versus Leicester. The only games where there was a significant advantage were Man United, where the penalty swung it in our favour, and obviously the opening day against Fulham. 
Arsenal conceded 48 goals last season with a percentage of set-piece conceded at 45.8%. Um, we haven't conceded a single goal from a set-piece this season, so on the face of it, it seems good, but it means that with 10 goals shipped from open play, only three teams have conceded more. Arsenal are, in fact, the only team in the top flight not to concede a goal from a set-piece, so we're improving at set-piece. We're switching off from open play, clearly, like you saw against Villa, like you saw against Liverpool, like you saw against City for that goal, you know, like you saw against Leicester. You know, off the ball is still our problem. People are looking blinkered from what I've seen we're still not following runners like the, the Aston Villa game shown people are just ball watching it's like under nines you're ball watching while your striker that you're supposed to be marking if I was a defender is just doing that you know you've got to be able to watch all and that's something that Arteta has to improve but to a degree mentally he shouldn't have to tell big 20 plus year old footballers who have been around the block now played enough games you know to do that sort of thing it's ridiculous Sort of thing. So depending on how you look at it, it's concerning from open play, there's an improvement in terms of goals conceded from set pieces. Again, the season isn't finished, so we need to be careful because these stats have a funny way of, what's the word, coming to, come to life as the season progresses, people. Um, Arsenal had 17 goal scorers last season. Their Premier League high was in, in 2009-010 was 18. But when you look at the players with three or more goals... 2019-20 saw just four, which is our lowest tally since 1993-94. 2018-19 had eight. 2017-18 saw ten players with three or more. Um, we've had six different goal scorers in the Premier League. The problem is four of them have only only have one to their name. Um, while with Aubameyang not scoring, the the team look um, look poor. Lacazette has had a total of nine shots in six games, and he's got three goals. Aubameyang has had 10 in 8. Compare that to Kane, who has had 38 in 8 matches. 47 players have had more shots than Aubameyang so far. Bikayo Saka has fired in the most shots for Arsenal, which I said yesterday in the stream with 12. Um, so this kind of highlights our problem. Arsenal have had 632 touches in their own penalty area, more than any other team in the Premier League. Um, and I, I don't have it to hand, but statistically, the, the other side of that is where some of the lowest in the other team's final third. So... Again, that just highlights we've got a lot of plans defensively or what we want to do in our half. When we advance to the other half of the pitch where you literally get three points, we don't have any plans. And again, it's down to the players to buck up their ideas. And as much as I sympathise with Arteta, the coaching has to be a bit more to par, sort of thing. Um, with that though, Mikel Arteta might have a problem against English managers. Mikel Arteta's Premier League win percentage versus English managers is 31% and against non-English managers, it's 60%. In the last 33 games, Arsenal have only drawn three. Two World Cup games decided on penalties, so there's actually only been one draw. Arsenal's last 12 league games have been have been won by a single goal margin. margin. So again, you can see how tight things are, people. Um, it is what it is. Um, we'll have to see, man. So again, statistically, I think these statistics kind of put into place what we already see with our eyes. And again... Few people have, you know, Arteta's probably got all these statistics to hand and probably more micro statistics that are relevant. So few people know more than him the task at hand. And this is why I want to see building blocks because we've got a week or, or 10 days or whatever now to our next game. I'm not naive. I'm not expecting a mad change in, in performance against Leeds. But what I'm expecting is in terms of tactically and technically, but what I'm ex expecting is more energy. Because if you think, you you know, Aston Villa gave it to you at home, what do you think Leeds are going to do at Ellen Road? We're lucky their fans aren't there. Because it would be even mad. You know, I think even with 11 men, Leeds are playing with 12 men. Because it's like their energy just becomes their next man. So if their fans were there, they'd probably be playing with 13. We've got a big, you know, we've got a big, big, big task at our hands. Don't just assume because Leeds lost 4-1 against against Palace that it's easy, it's easy frying. It's fully not that. So we'll have to see what happens. But like I said, courtesy of Obino, at Obino, the Twitter account, go give him a follow as well. You know, I'm big on giving people credibility. Like I said, he's very good with his stats. Um, the Athletic, if you're subscribed, you know, you just got to go to the Arsenal page and there's a whole heap of articles. And I felt it was it was good for me to think about. And it, 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 based on what I've seen with my eyes, some of the stats back it up. I've, some things were surprising. Some, they're even like we've shown. Some, there's even been some small improvement in several things. But, you know... The only thing that matters is the league position, really and truly. And all the statistics don't mean anything. All that matters is where you start the campaign, which Arsenal start first, Arsenal Villa, and last, you know. I mean, where, 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 where it finishes in May, you know, whether that's in an ideal world top four, that's with my heart. Realistically, I think we, we, we'd have to beg to finish fifth. We're coming sixth, seventh, eighth again. If we And I want to be wrong. I want man to clip up this video that in no, on November the... 
on November the 12th, 2020 and in May 2021 say, oh, you're really deluded, blah, blah, blah. I want my team to be in the top four. I want my team to accomplish our goals. But based on what I'm seeing, I'm not seeing anything to suggest that it's going to it's, it's gonna be that really and truly. And beyond just naively supporting my club, you know, I can't convincingly come on vid on, my, on a video and cap to you lot and say we're getting top four because this, that and the other. I don't fully believe in it. I don't think the consistency is there. It, that, that's the one thing for me. You know, there's nothing else to speak about. The consistency is not there. Consistency in lineup, consistency in performance, consistency in output, you know, consistency away from home. That's the word you'll live or die by, you know, and until and for years we failed to do such. There's no point being consistent in isolated incidences in the occasional FA Cup or big game. We do that. It's about being over it over 38 game period or being better than last season at that regard. All I want to see is that, you know, if an incident comes again where, you know, Leicester were leading the way and they messed up and United and Chelsea took advantage, we can be in that conversation. I just don't want to be sitting here in January and saying, nah, it's a myth. I want it to still be, you know, because I don't think we're going to get it, but we should still be in and amongst the pack. And, you know, we're lucky because looking at the Premier League, as poor as, as, as we have been, people, you know, there isn't too much in terms of it really and truly. Like, what, Leicester are first on eight. Obviously, goal difference changes things, but Leicester are first on 18. Sadly, Spurs are second with 17. You've got Liverpool 17 points as well. Southampton on 16. Chelsea are fifth on 15. Villa got 15 as well in sixth. Seventh is Everton with 13. Palace are eighth with 13. No, um, Wolves, apologies, also have 14, 13 points, apologies, and sit ninth. Um, Manchester City and Arsenal are in 10th and 11th, respectively, both on 12 points. So what? There's six points separating 11th and first place. I'm not saying we're going to win the league. I'm saying, you know, that's the one saving grace. Make your mistakes now and learn from it, people. Our last five games have only breeded two wins and three defeats, people. You look at the consistency of other teams, sad to say, but Spurs have got what? Four, vi four, four victories and a draw, people. You know, Le Leicester have put some good form together. Liverpool have, uh, you know, they're better than us, so it is what it is. Southampton have done very well. What? Four wins and one draw. Courtesy of Google, this this might even be capping to people, um, sort of thing. And Villa have done well, as have I know Everton's had a bit of a wobble. They've lost their three last games back to back, but they've done all right. We need to put consistency together. And like I said in a previous vid, the games aren't getting any easier. People, you've got to play Leeds, you got to play Wolves, you got to play Spurs, you got to play Burnley, you got you got what's it, Southampton and Everton, Boxing Day, you've got Chelsea. You know, it's not getting any easier for people, people. So you've got to stand up to be counted. And if you don't want to stand up to be counted, keep it moving. It's as simple as that, people. You know, you've got City in the, in the, in the, in, in, in the quarterfinals. Like I said, after Boxing Day, you've got Chelsea. The 28th, you've got Brighton away where you lost. Um, I'm never actually confident going to the Hawthorns away. 2nd of January, we've got to play them. You've got Palace at home. You've got Newcastle. You've got Southampton away in Jan. And then you've got United at home three days later. Obviously, some of these fixtures will probably be changed for TV rights. And assuming we're still in the Europa and whatnot. The games aren't com are coming thick and fast, people. And just by looking at February to March, people, it's a bit peak, you know. End of start of February, you got Wolves away. Then you got Villa away, where we lost last season. Forgive me if I'm wrong, or in preseason or something. We welcome Wolves to our bit. You've got City at home. You've got Leicester away. You've got Burnley away. You've got Spurs on the 13th of March. You've got West Ham away. You know, all the games are coming thick and fast. You can't feel sorry for yourself. They're coming thick and fast. You know, they're not spread out. We need to stand up to be counted. And anyone that's not with it needs to be moved on or needs to tell Arteta and say, you're not with this team. On that note, though, people, DG. I'm out. It's always a pleasure speaking with you guys.